Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. Tonight on News Hour. Kaduna State Government confirms kidnap of eight students as gunmen kidnap wife of Kano Village head, two sons. Lawmakers condemn calls for interim government, ask security agencies to be vigilant. Plateau Assembly crisis deepens, impeached speaker resumes amidst tight security. And on the international scene, Donald Trump becomes first president to be arraigned on criminal charges in U.S. history. Hello and welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. The news in detail. We begin with security where the Kaduna state government has confirmed that eight students of the government secondary school, Awang in Kachia, and others were kidnapped on Monday. The State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arouan, who disclosed this in a statement, added that the students were not kidnapped within the school premises, but on their way home from school when they came in contact with the bandits who had abducted other residents. Arouan said the management of the school has submitted the names and classes of the kidnapped students. In another development, the Kaduna state government has relaxed the 24-hour curfew imposed on Sabangaran Nasarawa Tirkaniya community in Chikun local government area. The review follows close monitoring and assessment of the situation by security agencies. According to the state government, effective Wednesday, 5th April 2023, the curfew will be in place from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., while residents of the area can go about their activities between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. The government advises residents of the community to comply with the curfew and maintain orderly conduct as security agencies continue to work in the affected areas. Similarly, gunmen have kidnapped two members of family of the village head in Nasarawa in Tsangyawa local government area in Kano State. Those kidnapped are his wife Halima Kabiru, age 38, and Ahiru Kabiru, who is 20 years old. Police Commissioner Mamman Dauda confirmed the abduction to the news agency of Nigeria, saying seven gunmen stormed the residence of the village head. Doda said the kidnappers took the victims to an unknown destination and police, on receipt of the information, immediately formed a rescue team in neighboring divisions. He described the incident as unfortunate but expressed confidence that the victims would be rescued and the abductors arrested. Moving on to politics, barely two weeks after the governorship elections, Bochi concerned stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress have dismissed insinuations in some quarters that the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, is the brain behind the unimpressive election outing in the state. The leader of the group, Isa Musa Maturi, stated this while addressing a press conference in Bochi. Trust TV's Adamu Imam has details. The clarification came amid the leadership crisis rocking the Bauchi State chapter of the opposition All Progressives Congress after the governorship and state assembly election in the state. Matori pointed out that the minister should not be blamed for the outcome of the elections in the state, especially the governorship poll which the party lost to the ruling People's Democratic Party. Now that some people have been put to blame here and there, we don't want that to happen. Mother Adam, Adam doesn't want that to happen. He wants us to, well, he agreed, and we also agree with him, that no leader can go scot-free without being blamed by one person or the other. And he is a leader, he's ready to face the challenges, he will not run away from the challenges, hence the need for him to call for the members to be out with him, to be out with the party, let's pursue the case that we are pursuing, and inshallah, we'll, at the end of the day, we'll smile to get the legally money given to Air Marshal is to return to him, inshallah. 
At a separate press briefing, the Kokandi Gundari Ward chairman and all APC executive members from Miso local government area announced the expulsion of the state chairman of the party, citing anti-party activities before and after the election. But in Miso local government, we hereby expel the state chairman of APC, Alhaji Babu Ali Miso for only anti-party activities. But the APC state chairman, Babeo Ali Misou, in his telephone chat with journalists, however, dismissed their claims saying they lack the power to remove him from office, adding that they will meet in court soon. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Some stakeholders in the electoral process in Zamfara State are asking the Independent National Electoral Commission to stop the declaration of election results at night to prevent wild celebrations that could trigger violence and destruction of public properties by hoodlums. They say that the post-election violence that ensued in Zamfara State would have been contained if the announcement of the winner of the governorship election was not done at night. The stakeholders made the call while speaking in an exclusive interview with Trust TV News in Guso, the state capital, over the violence that led to looting of assets and destruction of properties which followed the declaration of governorship election results. The report. The magnitude of the destruction and looting of public and private properties, as well as political parties' campaign offices by hoodlums in Zamfara State, shortly after the declaration of the governorship election result, which People's Democratic Party PDP candidate Dauda Lowell defeated the incumbent governor, Pedro Mohamed of the All Progressive Congress, has continued to generate reactions among wealthy individuals. Some of them are of the opinion that the situation will have been avoided if the security agencies were proactive enough to contain it, especially since there was already tension around the collation center, which gave early warning that required early response. The uh, vandalism that happened just after the declaration of the winner of the election, I think um, there are so many things, in my opinion, uh, ordering from the issue of uh, security and also the nature of how uh, the results have been declared. You, you know that there is already an atmosphere of political tension. And when things are declared during the night, I mean, at the, uh, on the part of INEC, uh, something declared around 3 or 4 o'clock, uh, there has to be celebrations. And the aftermath of that celebration in the night will result to this type of things. It is very, very unfortunate we found ourselves in this situation because the law is there and we all know the consequences of whoever found him or herself in that situation now if the election the winner has been declared celebrating a winner victory has nothing to do with looting of properties but what we continue to to look over it here who are those people that engage themselves in attacking people's home, in attacking various offices of government, in attacking some of the party, political party office to loot these properties. To me, they are criminals. And the, show, the security agencies who are calling on them already, they have even started arresting some of them. And we will continue to encourage the security personnel to make sure all those people that were found to be part of this looting be arrested and be prosecuted. They want security agencies to prepare and be more alert to prevent a reoccurrence of the incident that led to the destruction of roofing sheet, towels, door, windows, ceiling, vehicles and looting of valuable assets of federal and the state's governments. Assets worth over 1 billion naira were carted away at the National Technology Incubation Center, GUSO, which is an agency of the federal government. The stakeholders are of the view that if nothing is done urgently to forestall a future occurrence of this dastardly act, it will portend grave danger for Zamfara State in particular and the country at large in future elections. 
Still talking politics, federal government has cautioned the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi and his running mate Yusuf Baba Ahmed not to incite people to violence over the outcome of the presidential election. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed gave the warning in Washington, D.C. during his official engagements with some international media organizations. During interactions with the organizations, the minister said it is wrong for Obi in one breath to seek redress in court over the outcome of the polls and in another incite people to violence. The minister said in challenging the election results, there is no pathway to victory for either Obi or al Haji Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Responding to the minister, Peter Obi said various campaign of calumny are directed at his person, noting that he has been advocating for peace and issues-based campaign. Obi said his belief in due process made him to seek redress in court. Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale has uh, urged residents of the state to obey law and order, saying he is still the governor of the state. He made the call after a closed-door meeting with his commissioners in Gusau, the state capital. Governor Matawale said the 2023 general election has come and gone and wanted the people of the state to know that he may not have won the election, but he is still the governor till May 29. Therefore, residents should be careful and avoid violating the law. He assured his supporters that he will bounce back and that there is no cause to worry. Governor Mohammed Watawale, however, did not disclose the details of the meeting, but it may not be unconnected to the preparation for the handing over of power to the incoming government in the state. I, I have said it earlier that uh, the election has come and gone. Uh, people have to be very careful and they should know that still I'm a governor till the 29th of May. So people have to abide with the law and the regulations of the state. And uh, I assure the people of Zambia that we are bouncing back, inshallah. Presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, has broken his silence on the leaked audio of his conversation with the founder of Living Faith Church Worldwide, Bishop Oye Dikpo. In the uh, audio released by an online newspaper, People's Gazette, Obi was heard appealing to Oye Dikbo to help him mobilize Christian voters ahead of the election, especially those in the north-central states of Kwara, Kogi and Niger. But in a reaction on Twitter since the audio surfaced online, the presidential candidate who has a large following on the site on Tuesday said a campaign of calumny has been directed at his person in the past few days. The presidential candidate, who neither denied nor confirmed the audio, also said his campaign was not based on ethnicity or religion. He tackled Minister of Information Lai Mohammed, who accused him of treason, saying there were efforts to portray him in a bad light. Members of the People's Democratic Party in Rivers State continued their protest in Port Harcourt, the state capital, on Tuesday at the office of the Independent National Electoral Commission over the inspection of materials used in the last general elections. Tuesday's protest is joined by more state assembly members, including its leader, Martins Omaiwile, alongside the Deputy Speaker, Edison Ehe, and the chairman of Equerry Local Government Area, Samuel Nwanosike. In addition to the demands for joint inspection of electoral materials and issuance of certified true copies of result sheets, the PDP is demanding the arrest of the All Progressives Congress governorship candidate, Tonya Cole, for alleged murder. They are accusing Cole of leading thugs to attack them during the protest on Monday, leading to the death of one person. They say the party has submitted a petition to the Commissioner of Police seeking the arrest and prosecution of Cole. They also presented an acknowledged copy of the PDP's petition dated March 24, 2023, in which the party was demanding from INEC the certified true copies of electoral materials. 
The ruling of Progressive's Congress in Kebi State is facing stiff competition from the opposition People's Party, People's Democratic Party, I beg your pardon, for the April 15th supplementary election in the state. The Independent National Electoral Commission has said 15th of April to conclude governorship, national and state House of Assembly elections in Kebi State. Ishaq Mohammed speaks to the parties on their readiness for the elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Kebi State had declared election inconclusive. Various forms of irregularities characterized the election in 20 out of 21 local government areas. These includes overvoting, violence, declarations of results under duress, and inconclusive elections, amongst others. The dice has now been cast to correct the anomalies on April 15th. And the question is, are the political actors ready? Yes, as you are aware, and uh, we all know, Kelly State is a PC state. It's a PC state are fitted. And all that areas that is going for the wrong election is 100%, or oh, I can say 99% of the electorate in that area are APC members. And we know they are ready to vote APC on 15 of April to bring APC gubernatorial candidate, that is mean Dr. Nasser Idris Aurangwondu. Politics is a girl of number. PDP is the leading party. PDP has the majority of supporters in Kelly State. Apart from that, there are other political parties, which we call other parties. They are interested in coming along with us, and we have already marched with them, and we are working assiduously with them. And inshallah, with the help of Allah and the contact we are making. INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in the state, Ahmed Mahmoud, says adequate provisions have been made for logistics and security to ensure a credible election is achieved. We will have to have an update of the parameters, the delineations, the constituencies that had been cancelled, uh, which will be programmed for the supplementary elections. The head office will <coughs> factor them into the new permutations in the sense that they will be downloaded into our beavers so that our beavers will capture them properly uh, for election day activities. A political and public affairs analyst Ibrahim G. Kandede agrees that Kebi State is politically volatile and the inconclusive election could change the political fortune of the state. Mm, likely there will be, but notwithstanding the fact is that the gap between the two major political parties is what is making some of our participants to be somehow uh, weak to come out. But to be frank, uh, whether it is whether it there is or not, uh, it is the first thing in the experience and uh, the, the surprise we are expecting is for the. The stage is set for the election in Kebbi State. Only time will tell who picks the crown. Members of the House of Representatives on Tuesday were divided over calls for an interim by some Nigerians, as reported by the Department of State Services last week. The motion was sponsored by Representative Idem Oyime at plenary at the motion, as the motion was adopted by majority voice vote. The report. It was fireworks in the Green Chamber on Tuesday when federal lawmakers debated the motion sponsored by Idem Oyime on the floor of plenary. Coming under matters of urgent public national importance, the lawmaker urged the House to condemn the call by some Nigerians for an interim government to douse the tension arising from the outcome of the just-concluded presidential election. Recall also that the Department of State Services has also released a report suggesting that some Nigerians are planning for the establishment of an interim government as a way out of the present political tension in the country. Our democracy is a young one. At this point, I think it is our duty to do everything within our strengths to support the current democracy that we are enjoying, to strive and then stay. 
I mean the people that are making this call. I see them as the enemies of this country. Federal lawmakers were, however, divided, with members of the opposition demanding that the Department of State Services should name names and arrest those behind the plot instead of just alerting the public to such plots. This should not even be an issue that will be dissipating energy on in this house. People are dying every day in this country, killed by bandits, killed by hunger. Go to hospitals they cannot be attended to. Children cannot be afford to go to school. We are debat debating what is not in this house. They, do we even have a government in this country? If the government cannot perform between now and May 28, they should resign and go. Can we find in Nigeria who have called for an interim government, number one? Those ingredients that make the culture of democracy is tax, rule of law. And this, this National Assembly and zero down the house of rep is the temple of democracy. Can the temple of democracy discuss what is not passed? For members of the ruling party in the House, total condemnation for the interim government call is right if democracy in the country must be sustained. Nigerians have the characteristics when they lose out, they want things to be, go, to be taken back to the melting pot so that everybody will put his spoon and try his luck. This will not happen. Every lover of this country, every participant in this democratic process must fight this because it will take us two and a half decades back. Do you want to wait until that happened? The DSS came up, they said they are suspecting people. If they have not measured, you cannot ask them to measure Arabia because they are technical. They are, they are technocrats, they know what they are doing. They will know the time to come up and say this is the situation. You must have a country for you to rule. And if you are saying these kind of things, and you do not know who is interpreting it the way they are interpreting it. And then you do not want DSS to do their work. And of course, their work is to collect intelligence. The motion was adopted by a majority voice vote when put to vote by the Deputy Speaker Idris Wasi, who presided over the session. Daniel Bwala. The spokesman for the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate in the last election, Atiku Abubakar, has sued the ruling All Progressives Congress and its national chairman, Abdullahi Adamu, over an alleged unpaid debt of 120 million naira. The debt, Bola said, was an accumulation or accumulated money accruing from legal services rendered to the party, which the party leadership reportedly failed to pay. In a suit at the High Court of the Federal Capital in Abuja, Bola's law firm is praying the court for an order to compel APC and its chairman, Adamu, to pay him the 120 million naira debt. The court papers show that the claimants took steps to file all court processes, appeared in all the cases, both within and outside jurisdiction, and prosecuted the cases numbering nine diligently to their logical conclusion. Also speaking with journalists on the issue, Bola alleged that the APC's refusal to pay him his legal fees might be because he left the party, joined PDP and became a spokesman for Atiku Abubakar where he played a leading role in his campaign. Bola added that he made all diplomatic efforts to secure the payments but all fell on deaf ears with failed promises. You're watching News R on Trust TV. Coming up after the break. Is COVID-19 pandemic still a threat after claiming 3,000 lives? Do stay with us.
Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. It's still news on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. We told you that Kaduna State Government confirms kidnap of eight students as gunmen kidnap wife of Keno Village head, two sons. You also heard that lawmakers condemn calls for an interim government, ask security agencies to be vigilant. Moving to other stories, the impeached Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly, Abok Nuhu, on Tuesday resumed office following a high court judgment that reinstated him. The embattled Speaker was sacked on October 18, 2021 by the House and selected Yakubu Sanda as the new Speaker. The State High Court on Monday said the impeachment of Abok was null and void and ordered his reinstatement. Ado Musa completes the report. Hours after his reinstatement, the embattled speaker came to the House alongside other members loyal to him and assured that on Tuesday he will preside over plenary. We are here in the premises of the House of Assembly. All of us were elected to represent our various constituencies. And uh, we still have some months that are still left for us to continue the assignment that was duly given to us by our various constituencies. Uh, even though there was crisis sometimes, but today the court has given his stance against that illegality that was done. And uh, tomorrow, by the grace of God, sitting continues in this house peacefully, without any uh, rancor. We are not going to fight anybody. We are all members of the House Assembly and we are all plateau people, and we are Nigerians. So we we'll work together to improve the betterment of this country and our dear state, Nigeria. But soon after he left the House on Monday, the Chairman House Committee on Information, Nalon Daniel, in a briefing said the House was yet to be served the judgment reinstating the impeached Speaker. If there is any court judgment, I'm sure it will be served to the House. You cannot <coughs> take decision over what you don't know. So what we are hearing, since we were not in the court, and uh, we were just being told, and uh, you know, the house cannot take a, I mean, uh, rumor from outside to assume to be the position of the court. Until otherwise, the court serve the House of Assembly with the, with the uh, judgment. Which of course, even at that, the house still have the right to appeal the matter. So we cannot have two captains in a ship. It has to be one. But for now, there is no vacuum. And uh, Yakubu Sanda, right honorable Yakubu Sanda, is still the speaker of Plateau State House of Assembly. On Tuesday morning, however, the instated speaker presided over plenary alongside seven other members of the house amid tight security. Trust TV report that soon after the plenary ended, the House secured a stay of execution to prevent Abok from chairing further plenary sessions pending the outcome of the appeal on the matter. Adam Musa, Trust TV News. President Mohamed Buhari has written to the Nigerian Senate seeking approval of the reimbursement of 9,686.5 million naira to Plateau and Borno states as funds expended on federal roads which fell within the period before the federal government put a stop to such interventions. President Buhari's letter was read by the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawang, during Tuesday's plenary. The report. According to the letter, the reform will be carried out in the form of promissory note payable to Plateau and Brownon State's government for their rehabilitation of federal highways in the country. A breakdown of the sum shows that Plateau State will collect 6.6 .6 billion naira, while Brownon State will get 3.8 billion naira through the issuance of promissory notes in respect of federal road projects executed by them. The Senate may wish to be informed that the Federal Reserve Council FEC at its meeting of 1st February 2023 approved, approved the reimbursement of the sum of 6,601,769,479 Kobo to Plateau State Government and the sum of 3,084,000,000 
769,393 naira 63 copper to Bonasa government through the issuance of promissory notes in respect of federal road projects executed by the states. The Senate President also read three other letters from President Buhari transmitted to the upper chamber for consideration and passage. These are the Nigerian Police Force College Training School and Institution Establishment Bill 2023, the Nigerian Data Protection Bill, and the request for the confirmation of appointment of Abdul Abubakar as non-executive director of the Central Bank of Nigeria for a second and final term. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Senate has adopted the Harmonized Bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Peace Corps. The adoption comes from a conference committee of both chambers of the National Assembly. Recall that the Nigerian Peace Corps Establishment Bill was passed in 2022 by the two chambers. The vice chairman of the committee, Serial K. Dixon, highlighted the key areas of the report. As a president, the both chambers, as represented by the committees duly constituted in accordance with the standing orders, met and considered this singular discrepancy and adopted the House version. And uh, the committee uh, recommended that the House version, which retained the word Peace Corps of Nigeria as a title, uh, be retained. The Senate do approve the conference committee report on the Nigerian Peace Corps Establishment Bill 2023. Say aye. Those against Senate, I it. The bill is expected to be transmitted to President Muhammadu Buhari for assent. As the race for the leadership of the 10th Assembly is gaining momentum with members elect jostling for the available positions, a coalition of civil society organization has called for justice, equity and inclusion to produce the leaders that would engender national cohesion and consolidate democratic culture in Nigeria. Noel Sampson has more. With the conclusion of the 2023 general elections, which produced Bola Tinubu from the Southwest as the president-elect, and his vice, Kashim Shatima from the Northeast, respectively, attention has now shifted to the National Assembly, where new Senate President and Speaker will emerge when the Third Assembly is inaugurated in June. These civil society organizations want justice, equity, and inclusion to determine who emerges as chairman of the Third National Assembly. The Federal Republic of Nigeria is a very important arm of government, and we need a capable individual who will be able to, you know, uh, harness the potentials of all the senators in the chamber to work towards the growth and development of Nigeria. And if we are given the position now, it means that equity is justified, you know, and inclusiveness in governance is taken care of. The group said the National Assembly is a microcosm of the Nigeria state and the politics of the National Assembly must be played to reflect and satisfy the hearings of Nigerians for equality, justice and fairness to all geopolitical zones. Generally, uh, Nigeria have been crying for fair play, equality and uh, justice for all geopolitical zones. And the crafters of our constitution have in mind the uh, federal character in our appointments. So we hope that as the Southwest have gotten the presidency, not East uh, Vice President, the outgoing president is from Northwest Nigeria, the outgoing Senate president is from um, Northeast Nigeria, North Central and Southeast have occupied for the past 24 years the Senate presidency. So the zones that produce the president and his vice are not likely to get the positions. President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House of Representatives to give other zones a chance to claim the position, giving them a sense of belonging in the scheme of things. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria has urged the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, to call the National Broadcasting Commission to order over alleged violation of Nigerian Broadcasting Code. 
in a letter dated April 3, 2023, entitled Urgent Need for Minister of Information and Culture to Call NBC to Order. Bam Goshe said the attitude of NBC towards broadcast stations in recent times is not only arbitrary but smacks of high-handedness, which is almost suffocating the broadcast media in the country. He stated that the NBC has refused to follow its rules as stipulated in the Code on Investigation of Infractions, as well as imposition of fines on broadcast houses for alleged infractions. Bangoshi alleged that NBC provides no opportunity for broadcasters to see complaints against them, let alone allow them form an explanation or following due process at arriving at judgments. The executive secretary was reacting to the recent imposition of 5 million naira fine on channels television on alleged severe infractions committed during a live interview program titled Politics Today, which featured the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Deti Baba Ahmed. The defense headquarters has called for calm following viral social media video clips of the presence of some United Nations peacekeeping fighting vehicles and equipment sited recently in Benin, Edo State. According to the defense headquarters in a statement on Tuesday signed by the acting director of defense information, Brigadier General Tikir Gusei, the country is contributing troops to various United Nations peacekeeping operations, of which the most recent is the United Nations Interim Security Force for Abia, Southern Sudan. It also stated that the mission is commanded by Major General Benjamin Olufemi Sawyer, of which the UN doesn't have its own troops, but has entered into an agreement with troops contributing countries to provide their personnel and equipment for operations in its various missions. Addressing the case of the viral video, it said the military fighting vehicles and equipment painted in UN color as cited are being moved through the Wari port for movement to the mission area in southern Sudan to marry up with Nigerian troops who were inducted into UNISFA mission last month. He assured that the defense authorities, the defense headquarters, under the leadership of General Loki Rabo, will not allow the nation come under any threat that will warrant the deployment of United Nations troops in Nigeria. Many residents of a commercial building located at Akuzu Street, Diobu Axis of Port Harcourt, have been rendered homeless by an early morning inferno that gutted the entire building. Eyewitness account had it that the fire incident had, was caused by a resident who left her cooking stove on in her room and went out early in the morning. About 20 rooms, six shops and properties worth millions located in the building were raised. The victims, I beg your pardon, the witness said the stove exploded and ignited fire which gutted the entire building. Many of the residents were seen trying to remove a few of their properties salvaged from the inferno. Harsh economic condition worsened by COVID-19 pandemic has forced many vehicle owners in Katsina State to abandon their vehicles at mechanic workshops for months or even years. Abdullahi Yamadi visits some mechanic workshops where he had an interaction with technicians, motor mechanics and some car owners. The report. High cost of sapia parts, inflation and economic downturn has forced many to surrender and abandon their vehicles either at workplaces, filling stations, mechanic workshops and even on streets. Many car owners, especially among civil servants, are now resorting to using motorcycles and bicycles as the struggle to keep body and soul together gets tougher by the day. The mechanic workshops have become dumping grounds. Actually, if you take the, your vehicle to the mechanic, at times if you cannot give them the money they require, they will just leave your car. They will never go for it because uh, you know the situation we are in. Even the mechanic, they are suffering, they are struggling to survive. Some of the technicians and artisans here are concerned about the increasing number of abandoned vehicles 
which often become breeding ground for mosquitoes and other dangerous insects. There is a serious concern here. People do bring their cars for repairs, but abandon it because of increase in the price of spare parts or for insufficient money. They abandon it and go for months, sometimes for years. Cars here are exposed to all weather conditions. Sometimes children can scratch it or remove some parts, and owners will want to meet everything intact, which is impossible. Most of the time, we end up in courts. At the end, they say, they throw in Kokuma, they're going to say to the young one. But the large number of vehicles in mechanic workshops are not only those abundant due to the harsh economic conditions. Some vehicles stay longer than necessary at workshops because many of artisans and technicians do not have the work tools and state-of-the-art facilities to detect faults, fix and couple vehicles within the shortest possible time. Our main problem is the equipment of the work. Mm -hmm. Some of the equipment is a new model. We don't have it. We don't have it because uh, we need the help of government to help us uh, part of our work. The chances that these vehicles may end up in the hands of scrap dealers become higher by the day. And even higher when it becomes clear that some owners do not have a specific time frame within which to fix their vehicles and get them back on the road. Some car owners have clearly abandoned their vehicles to the mechanics, artisans and technicians and are hoping for better days so that they can fix these vehicles or buy other cars. <coughs> Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. Now moving to health, as part of efforts to help address vaccine hesitancy and ensure equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines in parts of the country, stakeholders in the health sector are advocating integrated health care facilities and community system strengthening to order in order to achieve the WHO 70% target of herd immunity against the dreaded virus that was meant to be reached before the end of 2022 in Nigeria. The implementation of an 18-month accelerating equitable access, acceptance and uptake of COVID-19 vaccines access project in Kano, Kaduna and the Federal Capital Territory from 2021 to 2022 is set to be responsible for the tremendous boost in vaccines uptake. The report. Coronavirus disease, which has claimed over 3,000 lives in Nigeria and millions of lives globally, is preventable through the use of vaccines. But Nigeria's ambitious goal of vaccinating 70% of high eligible population before the end of 2022 is yet to be achieved as a result of hesitancy, misinformation, lack of quality access to vaccines and healthcare providers. So COVID-19 is still with us, uh, but the good thing is that because of herd immunity, you know, the symptoms are not as as, uh, um, um, you know, uh, very, you know, fatal as they used to be in the beginning. But still, it doesn't stop us from continuing to protect ourselves, especially trying to uh, reduce uh, infections uh, through, you know, hand washing and these basic principles of um, being able to kind of uh, preventive measures around COVID. There are a lot of hesitancy out there. People are still, still uh, hesitant to take the vaccine. So that's the only challenge we are having. Not that vaccine is not safe or not that vaccine is not available, but there are a lot of rumors out there. That aside, the suspension of the lockdown and all the restrictions have also given the people the sense of euphoria that it's as the COVID uh, pandemic is all over. So there is no urgency to take the vaccine again. To advance access and quality in COVID-19 vaccination uptake, a multi-pronged approach through community and facility level sensitization, social mobilization through religious and traditional institutions have proven to be the most effective methods to reach the grassroots population as evident in the FCT, Kaduna and Kano, among other states with improved vaccination uptake record. For them to accept 
uh, COVID-19 vaccinations and to realize the importance of this vaccination and to be able to try uh, uh, send it down to the community and uh, the women especially because we realized that uh, women were not, uh, had no access. Working, you know, with, you know, students, even before the mask, the skills, and then we have like all uh, operations you know, um, and that is the game changer, whatever the report needs, everybody's activity. We had installations with uh, traditional and religious leaders. We have uh, information or messages passed to our religious institutions, to our sermons and what have you. Nigeria is yet to attain its 70% target head immunity of vaccinating a significant number of the population before the end of 2022, as immunization is currently at 60.1% nationwide. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're still watching News Hour on Trust TV. The news will continue shortly. Welcome back. Let's now join Chiamaka Nwafo for business news. Nigeria attracted a sum of $1.06 billion as capital importation in quarter four of 2022, a sum lower than $2.187 billion recorded in quarter four 2021, indicating a decrease of 51.51%. This was disclosed by the National Bureau of Statistics on Tuesday in its Nigeria Capital, Tuesday in its Nigeria Capital Importation Quarter 4 2022 report. The report stated that when compared to the preceding quarter, capital importation also fell by 8.53% from $1.159 billion in quarter 3 of 2022. The report noted that by country of origin, capital from the United Kingdom ranked top in quarter 4 2022 with 455.24 million dollars accounting for 42.92 percent they also added that categorization of capital importation by banks shows that city bank nigeria limited ranked top in quarter four 2022 with 
$208.72 million, followed by Standard Chartered Bank Nigeria Limited with $232.45 million and Rand Merchant Bank with $102 million. Salon capital importation, a total of 27 states, attracted zero foreign investments in 2022 as Nigeria's capital importation dropped by 20% from the $6.7 billion recorded in 2021 to $5.3 billion in 2022. This disclosure was from Nigeria's capital importation report published by the National Bureau of Statistics. According to the NBS, the top destinations that attracted the most investments in 2022 were Lagos State with $3.59 billion and the Federal Capital Territory Abuja with $1.62 billion. Other states which attracted foreign investments in 2022, although minimal, included Aquaibum, Anambra, Ekiti, Enugu, Katsina, Kogi, Oyo and Plateau states. The top three destinations of capital inflows into the country in 2022 with the United Kingdom, the United States, and South Africa. Capital inflows are net purchases of domestic assets by foreigners. And finally, in stocks, uh, it was yet another bearish session on the floor of the Nigerian stock market on Tuesday as downtrend extended. The Osho index dropped by 0.27% to close at 54,035.39 points. Market capitalization declined by 0.28% to close at 29.436 trillion naira, shedding 82 billion naira. The market breath closed negative as 14 equities emerged as gainers against 21 equities that declined in their share prices. An aggregate of 296.7 million units of shares were traded in 4,590 deals valued at 3 billion naira. And that's it on business news. I am Chiamaka Wafor. Moving on to the international scene, Donald Trump is currently under arrest at a courthouse in Lower Manhattan where he is facing charges relating to money paid to buy the silence of a former porn star Stormy Daniels. Donald Trump entered the courthouse for his arraignment through a discreet entrance while at least a dozen of NYPD officers stood guard at the front of the courthouse. It meant swarms of media and spectators who flocked to the front of the building on the sunny afternoon in New York missed the, his entrance. The former U.S. president was then fingerprinted as part of standard arrest paperwork and arraigned before Judge Juan Merchant, who read him the full list of charges. Trump is running for the U.S. presidency in 2024, but it will seem that a conviction will not prevent him from doing so. A large fire has gutted thousands of shops at a popular clothing market in the Bangladeshi capital, Dhaka. Shop owners are devastated by the loss coming just weeks before Eid, the Muslim festival marking the end of Ramadan. Hundreds of firefighters and army personnel battled the inferno as it tore through the clothing market, turning it into a pile of ashes. The blaze was brought under control more than six hours after it started at Bagabaza, market early on Tuesday. Several people have been injured, but no deaths have been reported so far. Authorities were still trying to figure out the cause of the blaze. Reports say at least 3,000 shops, mostly made of tin and wood, were completely gutted in the fire. Let's now join Adini Ajishafe for Sports News. Defending champion Rafael Nadal remains a doubt for the French Open after pulling out of next week's Monte Carlo Masters with an ongoing hip injury. The Spanish world number 14 has won the tournament in Monaco 11 times, but is not fit to return to action. Spaniard has hand and back injury problems. Nadal has not played since the straight set second round defeat by American Mackenzie McDonald at the Australian Open in January. Meanwhile, world number two Carlos Alcaraz is also out of Monte Carlo. Nadal had expected to be out for six to eight weeks after an MRI scan following his Melbourne loss showed a tear in his left psoas muscle. Missing the start of the European clay court season leaves him short of match practice before the Roland Garo event. He has won a record 14 times which begins on 28th of May. Canada's world number 7 Felix Aga Alisime will also miss next week's event with a left knee issue. 
But I said he hopes to be back from the Madrid Open, which starts on 26 April. And in football, the Nigerian Football Federation NFF says the men and women under 20 national teams are set to resume preparation ahead of their respective international competitions. The Flying Eagles, who finished third in the just concluded CAF under 20 African Nations Cup, will commence their training for the FIFA under 20 World Cup, while the Falconet, the women under 20 national team, will start preparation for the WAFU under 20 championship to be hosted by Ghana in May. In WAF women's competition, Nigeria are placed in the same group with the hosts, Ghana, Burkina Faso, and Cote d'Ivoire. The FIFA Under-20 World Cup will hold between Saturday, May 20 to Sunday, June 11, 2023. Indonesia will no longer host the Under-20 World Cup as the world await FIFA to announce the new host. The tournament will take place from May 20 to June 2, 2023 in Ghana. That's Sport News. I'm Adini Adjishafe. Thank you, Adeni, for that. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Hour. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching. Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour.